Two American women and six children with ties to ISIS are being sent back to the U.S. from Syria. They're among thousands of foreigners who have been held in various detention camps in the country. Kurdish allies say only humanitarian cases are being processed. They say the eight Americans are being returned at the request of the U.S. government. This comes after another woman and four children were returned to the U.S. earlier this year. So CBS News State Department reporter Christina Ruffini is following the very latest from Washington. So we have seen some of these stories pop up, not just American citizens, but also European citizens who want to come home right. now that uh, ISIS is being driven out of Syria. So what are your sources at the State Department telling you about these women? Well, the State Department won't officially give us numbers or comment on individual cases. But as you mentioned, we know from other sources that it's two women and six children, and they were repatriated to the United States. We believe that happened yesterday, uh, but that's not confirmed. These individuals were taken from a camp in northeast Syria, and the U.S. was able to satisfactorily verify their identity. The State Department told me yesterday that they take the claims of U.S. citizenship very seriously and try to provide help to Americans no matter where they are, even in places where the U.S. does not have a diplomatic presence like Syria. All right, so uh, how are they vetted then, Christina, and then who makes the decision to bring them back home? In Syria, it's incredibly complicated because, as I just said, there's no U.S. embassy, right? There's no U.S. diplomatic presence on the ground. There isn't someone with USA emblazoned on their jacket walking around these refugee camps that someone can flag down and say, hey, I'm an American, I'm sorry, and I'd like to go home now. Uh, it's done through a combination of factors and agencies, uh, our protecting powers, those countries that agree to represent the U.S. in places we don't have diplomats. In Syria, it's the Czech Republic. In Iran, it's Switzerland. Uh, and then a combination of groups like the Kurds and the UN and all these different people who are on the ground who will eventually somehow get these cases back to the State Department where a determination will be made. Of course, the concern is, you know, why did any of these women end up in Syria to begin with? Did they go there deliberately perhaps to assist ISIS or are they truly victims not knowing what they were getting themselves into? How do, how do authorities go about getting to the bottom of their story? I mean, it's hard. Um, a lot of these people haven't been out of the country all that long, uh, a couple years, sometimes less than five. Uh, and the U.S. has been tracking a lot of them. Uh, so when they pop up in Syria claiming citizenship, it's not a huge surprise. It can be as simple as uh, saying their name and Social Security number, and then the State Department can look that up and match their photo to the one that's on their passport records, uh, the passport that many of them burned to go join ISIS. Uh, now, with the children of Americans, because you are an American if you're born to a U.S. citizen abroad, DNA testing can and has been used, although the State Department wouldn't say specifically if that technique was being deployed in those refugee camps in Syria. And then after their identity is confirmed, if the State Department doesn't think they pose a threat, they can be repatriated. Now, if there's a question, uh, their case is referred to another agency, most likely the FBI, for a background, background check uh, and a threat assessment. Uh, they then either come back to the U.S. to face prosecution, as we've seen previously, or they come back to try to resume some approximation of a normal life, whatever that looks like. Hmm. All right, Christina, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.